Well, thanks so much for tuning in to Morning Live. Now, Civil Society Group Equal Education, or EE, has written to Parliament raising concerns over Zuki Safagu, a former executive mayor of the Buffalo City Municipality, being the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Basic Education. Now, the letter, which was addressed to ANC Chief Whip Pemi Majordina, calls on the ANC caucus to initiate the necessary processes to remove Fagu because of fraud and corruption charges against her relating to the misuse of municipal funds. And when Morning Live approached the ANC chief whip on the matter, she responded that the party has given Fako until today to give an update on her appeal case. Nongletu Madube Dube from Equal Education, their general secretary, joins us now from the SABC Seapoint Studios. Nongletu, thanks so much for speaking to us this morning and welcome to Morning Live. Thank you so much for having us. I think it's an important conversation that we want to start here today. Um, and it's, I think it's a general call that civil society should be thinking about. Who is going to become the chairs of our various portfolio committees? Because this is just one of the ways that we're able to, as civil society and as general communities, and in, in our case, the school community, are able to, to make sure that the legislative processes or channels that are in place for government to be able to do its work effectively um, and efficiently are, are seen to represent uh, a good standard of ethics, uh, and of compliance uh, and, and so we're, we're really worried and that's why we're making this like this big call for the withdrawal of Uzuki Safago as uh, the chairperson of the portfolio committee for education in particular and I mean I think the strange thing is that this, this sort of campaign or demand from equal education side has come over sort of a, a various transitions first it was a call for the withdrawal and this happened uh, outside Sona um, on the 20th of, of June uh, but we, we, we were harassed and chased off by police and asked not to try and interrupt the proceedings for the president. But we wanted him to know exactly what we were thinking. We wanted Tandim Odisa to know exactly what the call was. And I mean, no one's responded to us or spoken to us in this matter. And now what we're, we're saying is that we have to write formally to people and make calls like this on media to say, look, can the rest of civil society, can Penny Majundila in her role, Tandim Odisa in her role, the Ethics Committee in Parliament, um, can they just uphold the Constitution? Can they hear out learners and teachers um, that represents thousands? all across South Africa say to them, the chairperson of our, of our, of our portfolio committee cannot be someone that uh, has sat uh, and been charged of, of nine counts of fraud. Um, it cannot be someone that has ceased to be an MP in the past uh, because of having misused public uh, funds and resources. Someone that's been convicted of these things as well. Uh, rightfully enough, served a sentence. Um, and there's always space to discuss things around re restoration uh, and redemption. But, uh, but what we're saying is that that role in particular is crucial for us and how we're going to be able to use the space and build a capable state with regards to education, the provision of that basic service over the next couple of years. Uh, so I mean, f for us, it's, uh, it's a no-brainer. It should be such that, uh, that the person that holds that position holds the utmost uh, integrity. In, in the same sort of standard, we hold ourselves as equal education or other members of, of civil society. I mean, and, and that's why we, we really... Ex we're we're happy to be here and we're hoping this is going to make a difference or impact some change somewhere uh, inside Parliament. So what has come out of your deliberations with the ANC Chief Whip, uh, Pemi Majordina? L last I heard, so we've been trying to sort of put our feelers out. We don't have direct access to Opemi. Is that uh, she, she hasn't received our letter, and I don't understand why, because it's been directly addressed to her, and it's copied in uh, Tandi Modise and the Ethics Committee of the ANC. And, I mean, we deliberated a lot, and we spoke to sort of... Um, I do not say friends of equal education that work in the parliamentary watch space and asked well, what are the right channels, you know, and did our own research in trying to figure out who's the right person to send this letter to. So the voices of these learners and teachers are sort of amplified and goes into the right ears. Um, so it's disappointing to know that she thinks or says that she hasn't gotten this yet. Um, I mean, maybe that's something to worry about as well, but we haven't gotten a response. Um, and and so as, as a social movement, we have to think of various ways to be able to sort of push this message along and make sure that by the end of today, because what we understood also was that the chairs of the portfolio committee would, would be announced today. And it's, cr it's crucial and critical for us to be able to feel like we can use that channel and that space inside parliament. One of the very core sort of stones of, of democracy, if anything else, if we, we aren't able to access parliament through that committee and the DBE, oh God, I mean, it's a story because we, we know that the DBE has it needs that space to be able to to get oversight but also be accountable in, in, in some ways directly to members of civil society to schools and teachers and if that space i think is is, is tarnished by the by, by her role as as, as a chairperson then it, it's going to be a difficult 
it will be difficult to, to, for us to feel that we can engage and interact positively in that environment. And I, I'm mostly worried that outside the calls the ANC has made through the president's own mouth around the type of cabinet that he wants to build, they, they're walking right and talking left. All right, or, or rather walking left and talking right. I don't know, yeah, I'm trying to make sure that I, I save the perspective of the left here. But anyways, the, the point is that you can't say one thing as a, the Sir Ramaphosa, but also do another in, in, in the caliber and the, and the capacity that you build into ministers that come into these portfolio committees. So we, we, we're worried in general. And what we're saying is equal education is that this time we won't be caught napping. The issues that we represent are immediate and emergent and they are serious. Uh, and we need someone who's going to be capably be able to hold those things for us, uh, especially by, by, by keeping good oversight uh, and being accountable for, for, for the basic education department nationally. Nangleto, what's your response uh, to the assertion that people are innocent until proven guilty and the fact that she has uh, still taken this matter on appeal needs to be concluded? What's your response to that? Are you willing to accept that and wait until uh, that appeal process is concluded? It's unfortunate because one of the things that we sent to the DBE last week, for example, through our memorandum from that small action, uh, spoke about a 2016 deadline for norms and standards for school infrastructure. It spoke to issues around buildings collapsing and killing learners in KZN. It spoke about uh, pit latrines that were killing learners and, and school staff um, in, in Limpopo and water security for schools uh, in KZN and Limpopo in rural provinces. Those types of issues are emergent uh, and they're immediate and they're necessary. So we, we aren't able to wait for those processes to sort of roll out. What we're saying in the moment is that it's not even a, a condition or a circumstance of where there's smoke, there's fire. She's been convicted of these things. She served a three-year three sentence uh, of of service and house arrest and what we're saying is that because of those things uh, could the ANC think uh, sort of deeply and clearly about not a cater deployment situation but rather building in a capable state through putting someone that is responsible and doesn't have this kind of background uh, or tainted background in, in that position in particular it, it's one of the cr most crucial portfolios to hold in government and I think they should have taken it seriously so, um, speaking of school infrastructure, last week, Equal Education, you were outside Parliament, as you'd indicated earlier, um, that was during SONA, demanding that the President holds Minister Angie Motsecha, in particular, accountable for the state of school infrastructure in the country. And uh, apparently this didn't go down well. Just, just give us your perspective on this and, of course, how and why you want the Minister to be held accountable. Mm. Look, I mean, there are, there are two issues there. The first is that the reason we were outside Parliament in particular is because we wanted to speak to the President. Uh, after he launched the SAFE initiative last year, speaking about sanitation in particular, so business came to the party, he was like, I'm going to find money, we're going to fix these issues. We were like, fantastic. Um, there's also a policy uh, or a law that's in place that says by 2016, we shouldn't have had this problem. So, so think about how you hold the minister accountable, but also how do we action this in a way that's going to, to have immediate results for learners in schools today. Um, but uh, a couple of days before that, uh, the DBE had appealed a court judgment from July that had held uh, and made stronger this law for, for school infrastructure. So we had gone to this breakfast to be like, look, you can't say one thing and then take us to court on another day. And the president's chief of staff, I mean, everyone that was around for that silent protest was like, look, we'll reach out to you immediately. And they hadn't. So we wrote a letter to formally say, look, this is the reason we came out. These are the issues. Can we please meet and deliberate? And that just has, has never happened. We've never gotten any responses. So we were outside parliament going, look, it's your second sauna for the year. You've made these broad straight promises, some of which can't even be properly achieved through the kind of budgeting processes that the DBE has in place already. Fine, we can work through those things in various channels and spaces. But can you at least engage learners when they come to you? Uh, and we got harassed and sort of tarted away. And, and part of what, what worries us is that the ANC is again showing the sort of attitude of not wanting to be held accountable, not want, uh, refusing to come to the streets to people because protest is a like dirty word. Uh, and for learners to be harassed in particular, uh, confronts a constitutional uh, a court ruling last year on the right to protest of, of citizens in South Africa. And equal education was part of that case, speaking about the experience of learners in particular uh, and the simultaneous nature of how we, we, we vindicate and victimize uh, and harass children that take up these issues for themselves. So, I mean, it, it, it was, a, it, it was a, like a plethora of issues that took place that day. And we're hoping that through being able to use these kinds of platforms, we're able to get the rest of the society, school community in South Africa to rally behind us, uh, civil society in particular, and in supporting our call for Zuki Safago in particular to be withdrawn um, as an MP and as, uh, I think, uh, head of the Portfolio Committee for Education, but also for Cyril Maposa to walk his talk, for the ANC to walk their talk. We can't still be at the mercy of cadre deployment. Too much has gone wrong. Um, there are a number of, of other organizations that I've seen sort of talk about, they worry about the ministers that are going to become 
heads of portfolio committees have been being names that have popped up in the Zondo Commission. Those are the things that I'm talking about. Those are red flags. And we, we can't sit idle while those kind of things take place, um, not on our business in any case. And we're in the business of, of trying to make sure that we get the best type of qual quality education uh, today in, in South Africa. And I think you touch on an important point there because one of the questions is, of course, um, you have pointed out that you want Zuki Safako to be removed, but there are others, as you rightly say, who also have these clouds hanging over their heads. Um, why aren't you necessarily calling for them to be removed as well, if for no other reason than, you know, as a matter of consistency? We are, we're consistent to the matters around education. Um, if you look at the type of people that had endorsed our letter, for example, other members of civil society, and I think we must give each other space uh, to think deeply, to interrogate what it means to call for these positions, and then let people come to the fore in their various ways. But I do think that this is a conversation that's happening inside civil society, and I'm sure there'll be ways that we're going to, to push on and press on and, and support each other uh, sort of in, in making this grand call. I, and will the ANC to be publicly sort of susceptible to this kind of sort of, uh, to not even criticism for this kind of call, because I think it's, it's absolutely legitimate. Uh, and, and hope for the best. They'll they, they, they walk, they talk. It's the first 100 days in office, you know, and they've promised all these grand things. They, they must come to the people now uh, and, and do what's right. So last year, you wrote as Equal Education an open letter to President Cyril Ramaphosa, inviting him to commit to a meeting with you to engage on some of these very critical issues. And uh, as you said, you were at SONA last week because I would assume you haven't had the opportunity to have audience with the president. So what are you going to do now, given the latest issue that you've raised around Zuki Safako? If you are not heard, if Parliament does not take heed of your concerns and your calls, what's your next step? I mean, it gave us an identity, you know, so we are a social movement. We're going to have to see what kind of sort of platforms in areas like this one that I, I'm using today to talk, to talk to Parliament, to talk to the ANC in particular, and maybe even lobby other kinds of groups of people that are inside Parliament to help us to sort of think deeply about the role of uh, a chairperson of this kind of committee and how Zuki Safako maybe isn't the right person to take up this role. So, I mean, we'll see. We're, we're, we're a membership-led organization. When we talk to members, learners across this country about what this means uh, and what, what, what's coming to sort of our confidence as information, and, and we'll figure out what to do from there. But at the moment, we're, we've got a letter. We'd copied in um, um, the, 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 um, the speaker of the National Assembly, Tandi Modise, to the email we had sent to uh, to Pema Majonida. So we're hoping to now then write directly to Tandi Modise and see if anything can pick up from them. But definitely we still have party watch groups uh, thinking with us and helping us plot a way forward. And uh, just the final and I don't know, one, I mean, speaking... you can probably see these learners outside parliament at some point. Mm, and, and just a final one, uh, uh, speaking of Tandi Modise, the speaker of uh, parliament there, uh, you said you sent a letter, obviously, to the ANC chief whip, and you also copied in uh, the speaker. Did you receive any correspondence from her office stating that they actually received your letter? I've received. No, we haven't. I sometimes wonder if our name doesn't make it difficult for people to open these emails, because at this point it's looking bleak. But no, we haven't, and so that's why we're going to keep trying. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much, uh, Non Neto, uh, for speaking to us. And that, of course, Non Neto Madube Dube, Equal Education's General Secretary, talking to us about their request for the removal of Zuki Safaku. Now, Zuki Safaku is the former mayor of the Buffalo City Municipality, and they want her removed uh, as uh, the nominee or the elect for a portfolio committee on basic uh, education and they saying this is because she is a convicted fraudster and there is of course an appeal pending but they said this doesn't matter she's a convicted fraudster all the same and therefore she should not be placed in such a position of great importance where she's expected to shoulder great responsibility and they are saying that this shouldn't be peculiar just to the portfolio of education but looking at other former ministers who've also been implicated in uh, charges of corruption and perhaps all of those people should be removed and uh, talking about perhaps civil society uh, needing to gather more momentum around these issues and actually go out and lobby so that people who do have questionable records do not head up portfolio committees. So that is the situation there regarding equal education and their call for the removal of Zugi Safaku.